Is a pod filter killing the power on your car? Today we're going to find out. I've just installed a pod filter on Marty's Peugeot. Perfect. We've got Scotty Hilsinger here from Haltech. He's tuned thousands of cars over the years. Probably 50 of our Easily. cars he's tuned or had on the Easily. dyno. Scotty, how much power have I just made? Or lost? Lost. How much power have you lost? You've put a pod filter straight on the side of the throttle body here. That's it. You're pulling in hot air straight off the radiator. It's not as oxygen dense. Where you're pulling that air from, any restriction that the factory intake system had is far outweighed by the, the filter that you've just put in there and the boiling hot air. This will lose power doing it like this. Some people do that for the sound, but also yep. some people and some engines, you can't do that because you've got airflow meters and other stuff. But in this case, you can actually, you could actually just whack a filter on there. Right? For sure. So if you're measuring the air that's going into the engine using a map sensor, a combination of a map sensor and an air temperature sensor, you can do it just like this. Yep. But there's a lot of science and a lot of magic in that intake pipe that's coming off that throttle body. In order to get that air in when the inlet valve is opening and closing, there's a whole bunch of resonance and a whole bunch of magic. I was going to say we're talking resonance, okay. And you might find by simply taking that pipe off and just running it like that, no air filter, no nothing, probably will lose power. Really? Yeah, right. Yeah. So can we have a quick chat then? Uh, because this is, I would say this is probably the most popular modification yep. in the world, right? So under what conditions is a pod filter going to be advantageous? Not the aesthetic of the sound, Let's talk pure power, pure maths. Yep. Under what conditions is a pod filter going to make us power? So we would want to have as much of the factory intake system as we possibly can closest to the throttle body because all of that stuff is, is set up really nicely in most newer style factory cars. Yep. We want the air filter out in the cold air as far as far out the front as possible. Yep. Okay. So nothing to do with ram air. So when you're doing 100 kilometers an hour down the freeway, you're not getting boosted. It's, it's so minute that it's... But I read like, on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> it's so, so minute that it's just... It, it's not even... It's, it's zero point something, something, something percent. Like, it's zero. Okay. It's more about getting cold air because the colder the air is, the more dense it is, the more dense it is, the more oxygen it is, yep. or oxygenated it is. So as that more oxygenated air is going in, the engine management system is then knowing that we've got that amount of density based on the manifold pressure, based on the air temperature. So it can then adjust the fueling and the ignition timing to optimise the engine for that colder air that's going in. Free power then? Free really? power. If you the, do it right. The colder the air is going in, the, the better things are going to be, the more power it's going to make. Right. Instead of just having this one size fits all like here, there it is on a Peugeot. If we come over here and we look at the Suzuki Swift again, would there be different considerations as to how this setup is going to be most efficacious for this system versus this? Or is the science going to be the same? The science is going to be exactly the same. However, we can get the colder air in with using the most of the intake tract. In saying that, this car's got an airflow meter sitting up here. So we can't, ideally, we don't want to bolt a pod filter just directly to an airflow meter. Airflow meters are very special in the way that they're measuring that air coming through. That's how we do our air to fuel ratio. We measure how much air is going in. Yep. Then we can do our, say, 14 to 1, our 14.7 to 1 for stoichiometry, mix it with our fuel, and that's how we get the bang. That's how we get our air to fuel ratio. If that air flow meter isn't measuring the air correctly because you've taken off a whole bunch of resonators in front of it, so instead of that air stream coming through nice and, not, like nice yep. and neat, it's wobbling all over the place and there's a whole bunch of turbulence before it. It doesn't measure the air correctly and that's when you're going to have tuning problems. Okay. So, well, just to finish with then, in conclusion, how many hot air intakes have you run on your own cars and for what reason did you do it if you did? <laughs> None. The only time that you ever see something like either if it's a show-style car where there's a... Packaging physical, issues. A space right. constriction. Yep, yep. absolutely. Um, if someone just genuinely loves the noise, and even if you lose a few percent of torque and you hear that massive roar, that, that thump that you get out of okay, an aspirated right. engine, it sounds awesome. So I fully, I absolutely get it. Yeah. And if it's plus or minus a few percent on a car that's making 80, 100, 120 kilowatts, well... You're not going to feel it. You're not going to know. Can I ask one more question? Does any of that change when you add turbos? Um, it does a little bit. Um, as, as far as the intake tract part, no, it doesn't matter at all anymore because we're forcing that air in. Same rule applies though, cold air intake in. Yeah. Uh, the colder the air that's going in, remembering with your turbocharger, we're going to compress it, yeah. which heats it anyway. 
but then we're going to put it through the inner cooler to cool it again. But whatever, if we can get it colder into the, turbo, into the turbocharger, if it's a few degrees colder, it'll come out a few degrees colder as well. There it is, people. Awesome. All the questions you had and maybe some you didn't answer about pod filters. If you do want to see some more stuff about pod filters and uh, air filters, uh, we've got a bunch of videos down below, which is us on the dyno, testing out cold air intakes, panel filters, performance filters. You can check that out. Massive thank you to Scotty. Pleasure. Absolute legend. Thanks for coming down. Thanks, mate. And um, congratulations on your new car outside. I won't mention what it is in case it's a secret, unless you'd like to tell everyone what okay. it is. Well, it does have a cold air intake sitting up the top. Yeah, oh, so you can hear it. Sitting right. up here, right and next it, to the ear. And it does have a factory pod filter, or factory air filter and factory air box. Yeah. And turbos. Car. And yeah. turbos. Fantastic. And uh, eight pistons. Eight pistons. Very exciting. Eight injectors. That's right, he's got an SS ute with a snorkel. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's very exciting. Uh, there it is, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. Links of other stuff down below. Thanks again, Scotty. Marty, let's get back to modifying our shit boxes. You can check out that uh, series, which is called Cash First Trash on the main Mighty Come Ons channel. The other one, see you over there next time. Bye.